Hi, it's Professor Cummings, and I have another example video for rotational analysis. And in this case, we are looking at actual gears in a little transmission or a gearbox. Uh, we will go through this, and it's got a few moving parts, so we'll go through them one at a time. So let's first read the problem. If gear A rotates with a constant angular acceleration of alpha sub A is equal to 90 radius per sec radians per second squared, Starting from rest, determine the time required for gear D to attain an angular velocity of 600 rpm. Also, find the number of revolutions of gear D to attain this angular velocity. Now, gear, gears A, B, C, and D have radii of 10, or excuse me, 15 millimeters, 50 millimeters, 25 millimeters, and 75 millimeters, respectively. All right. So now let's go through this one a little bit more, one at a time. So gear A, which is over here, rotates. We'll say that's the input. This one starts to rotate at a constant angular acceleration of 90 radians per second. So what does that give us? What does that tell us? All right. So it's a constant angular acceleration. All right. And it's gear A, and it's rotating. So we, our power is coming here. It's coming in, going through to gear B, going to gear C, and then out to gear D. And this is where the power is coming out. It's also starting from rest. So that tells us a few things here. Just from this, this clause here, we know that we've got constant keys are kinematic equations, or four kinematic equations. And we know all of our initial uh, information is going to be set to zero, or potentially set to zero. So determine the time required. So that tells us which equations we're going to need to worry about once the time function in them. For gear D, T, D to attain an angular velocity of 600 RPM. So that's the final um, you know, velocity for gear, for gear D. Now also find the number of revolutions for of gear D to attain that angular velocity. So there's a few things going on. And then the size of the gears or the radii of the gear, all the gears, those are there, and like I said in other videos, it's the ratio of these radii that tells us how much things like our angular and tangential velocities are going to change. It just depends on whether they've got a common shaft of rotation, center of rotation, or if they've got a common tangential velocity. So, and in this example of this gearbox, it looks like they've got examples of both of those. So, that's the basis of the problem. So let's go ahead and start setting things up with what we know. Cool. So we got the constant angular acceleration of the input gear, or gear A. Uh, we know gear D, you know, has a initial velocity of zero RPM, or the whole thing is zero RPM. But gear D in particular has a final angular velocity of 600 RPM. And we got all the radii of, of all the gears. So let's have a little free body diagram to look through this again. Here you got gear A, things going in at gear A, 90 radians per second. So gear A and B, gears A and B have a common tangential velocity, since they've got the, the mesh teeth. You know, so the tangential velocity is going to be common, but our angular velocities from A to B are going to be proportional to these respective radii. So that's one thing to, to keep in mind. So one is at 15 millimeters, the other one's at 50 millimeters. So we're going to see a change based around those radii. And we have an equation for that, and I'll show you what that equation is going to be. Now we got B and C that have a common shaft or a common center of rotation. That means that whatever the angular velocity of B is, it's going to be the same angular velocity of C. Now the tangential velocities are going to be different, but the common angular velocity is going to be different. And those tangential velocities will change based on the radii, right? So 50 to 25. So common common angular rotation. And then C and D is much like C, A and B. You've got a common tangential velocity. But your angular velocities are going to be proportional to your two radii. Again, that's where the whole concept of velocity ratios comes from. So that's the free body diagram. And we've got all of our information. 
let's state what it is we're trying to find. You know, the time for gear D to reach its final angular velocity and the number of revolutions for gear D to attain that final angular velocity. So when we think about what's going on, and again, we just went through all of this with the free body diagram, you know, the acceleration is constant. Uh, gears A and B have a common tangential velocity and acceleration. Gears C and D have a common tangential velocity and acceleration. And gears B and C have a common angular velocity and acceleration. And again, we've got equations for, for all of those things. So we're going to have to follow the path of the power, you know, through gear A to B to C to D. And then we can start looking at some of our, our you know, calculations to get our final answers. So let's start moving forward here. So, you know, our angular acceleration, we can do that for each one of those gears. We're going to need a few different equations for that, but we can do that for each one of those gears. So let's start off here with, you know, gear A and B. They have a common tangential. And so A, B, or alpha A, or alpha sub B times R sub B is equal to alpha sub A times R sub A. So those are, so our tangential acceleration is common. So that means these equations are equal. And the only unknown is the acceleration of B. So we can solve that for B. We're dividing both sides by r sub b. So we got 90 radians per second squared times 15 millimeters divided by 50 millimeters. Again, there's that ratio again, 15 to 50 times that velocity. And you end up with an angular acceleration of b of 27 radians per second squared. Now we also know that because this common shaft that the angular acceleration of B is equal to the angular acceleration of C. All right. So that means that we know that A sub C is also 27 radians per second. Now, when we go to B, C to D, we have to go back to our tangential e equation. And the only unknown here is alpha sub B. We have acceleration for C. The radius of C and the radius for D. So we'll divide both sides by the radius of D. And we have 27 radians per second squared times 25 uh, millimeters divided by 75 millimeters. Again, there's that ratio. And we end up with 9 radians per second squared. So we started off at 90 radians per second squared. It goes through the gears in the gear train because of the varying diameter of the different gears we reduced it down, slowed it down to 9 radians per second. Now the exact opposite happens with the torque, just as a little side note. Uh, the torque actually goes up when you do that. And it's the same concept. So now we've got accelerations for all four gears. And you accelerate for all four gears. So let's move forward with our problem. Let's start looking at trying to find the angular velocity of gear D. And once we've gotten that, we can start getting our, you know, doing our final answers. So from that, you know, we know that gear D, where its final is going to be 600 radians, or excuse me, rotation revolutions per minute. And we're going to have to put this into radians. So again, 600 revolutions per minute, you know, and then two pi radians, you know, two pi is a, you know radians per revolution, so what we're gonna do is a few things are gonna get canceled out here, and you got one minute for every sixty seconds, so we're gonna get this to radians per second, and so minutes, and minutes, so what we're left with is radians per second, and we can do that uh, math six hundred times two pi divided by sixty, and that gets us to twenty pi, you know six hundred divided by sixty. And then times um, 2 is your 20 pi. Or you can multiply that times 20 times pi, and you end up with 62.83 radians per second, which is the answer I would prefer. I don't really like using pi as some sort of placeholder. So now we have an angular velocity for D, as well as an angular acceleration for D. So now we can start to look at doing this analysis on gear D. So now let's move forward from here. 
So that's the information that we've spent calculating on the last slide. So now we can start looking at our kinematic equations. Keep in mind we had a constant acceleration, you know, and we also were looking for a time function, and we were looking for a you know how many revolutions it would take to get there. So when we start to put you know things into radians again, or more into further into radians. So let's start up this. We will start by looking at that, you know, that constant acceleration and getting one of our kinematic equations from that, since we can base that off of it. And there's a kinematic equation we can have access to. Here we have gear D, you know, that final uh, angular velocity of gear D is equal to the initial angular velocity of gear D plus the acceleration of gear D, angular acceleration of gear D times some unit of time that it would take to get there. And in this equation, we know that it started from rest. So this initial angular velocity is zero. We know that this is 600. And we were given, or excuse me, we calculated this at nine radians per second. So we have got one unknown, which is time, and we can solve for time. So what we do, we will basically end up, well, we will subtract this from both sides. We will say take it out at that point, but then divide by the, your uh, acceleration. And what that goes to is, you know, 62.3 radians per second, you know, which would be our angular velocity, you know, is equal to, you know, minus zero radians per second, our initial, you know, startup velocity, and our constant acceleration of nine radians per second. And that leaves us with a time of 6.98 seconds. So it takes almost seven seconds to get up to that speed at the acceleration that we were given. So now we have a time. We have all of our velocities. So now what we are looking for is the number of revolutions. So now we're going to have to use a, another kinematic equation that's based on theta. You know, put this into radians or since we're dealing with radians, and then convert that to revolutions. So here we have another equation, you know, our final angular velocity squared for gear D, and our initial angular velocity squared for gear D, plus twice the acceleration, angular acceleration for gear D. And here we have the uh, delta of revolutions. And since we know we started off at rest, you know, so that's gonna go to zero, we know this will eventually go to zero as well. So now we just have you know, one unknown in this equation. So if we solve for that, we get our delta in, and like this will eventually go to zero, divided by two alpha. And what we end up with, plug in everything we know, our 62.83 radians per second squared minus zero divided by 2 times 9 radians per second squared. So we're going to start to cancel quite a few things. Radians per second squared, and this will be, per second, or excuse me, this will be radians. Uh, you're only going to cancel one of the radians. Let me go ahead and uh, fix that. So you're going to cancel one radian. So this will be radians squared over second squared. So you cancel that radian, and you will cancel all your time functions. So those will all be gone. And you'll be left with radians. So when you do this, go through the math here, you end up with 2.49 radians, or that converts to 34.9 revolutions. And again, don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, definitely ask questions. Uh, make any type of suggestions you have in the in the comment section. As I move forward, you know, I'm doing this for your benefit to, to go over this to these topics. And I will talk, this is Professor Cummings, and I will talk to you soon.